my plans to teach cycle two, week five, memory work. For geography, we have European cities, so I'll give them a blank copy of this map. This is what mine looks like. So whenever we go through these, I don't just like show them my map and then have them just color them all. I go through them one at a time. So I tell them, do not color anything until Ms. Chelsea t says that it's time to color. So I ha say, everybody, get find your blue. And I have them hold their blue up in the air. And so once I see that everybody's ready, I say, okay, let's t find England. Who can remember where England is? And so everybody will point to England. And if they're having a hard time finding it, I um, will just sing through our European country songs. So I'll just remind them, Ireland, England, France, and Spain, Portugal, round again, so that they can locate England. And then I'll say, okay, color the little dot in England blue. This is London, England. And I'll make everybody say London, England. Maybe do it like with a little fun accent. And then I'll say, okay, put your blue down and take your finger. We're gonna swim across the English Channel into France. So everybody touch France. And so they probably will be able to find France, especially since we just had the Seine River last week. And so I'll say, okay, now find your red and hold your red up in the air. So after they find their red, I'll say, okay, let's find the Sin River. Do you guys remember where the Sin River was? And so after I'll show them where it's at if they can't find it. And then I'll say the little dot that's on the Sin River is Paris, France. And so color it red. And so everyone will say Paris, France. And then I'll say, now just go right down below it. There's another little dot and we're gonna color it green. And this is Orléans. And you have to say it with your best French accent, Orléans, France. And so um, I'll, I'll point out to them, like, it looks like we might say Orleans, like New Orleans, but that is not how they say it in France. You say Orléans, France, and have them do it, you know, in their best little accent. And then come all the way down. We're going to go across this mountain range. And right down here, there's another dot in Spain. And so see if they can find Spain, which might be harder for them since, you know, we've been kind of been working up here the last couple weeks. And so may need to remind them where Spain is and then show them that little dot and say, there's Barcelona, Spain, and have them say Barcelona, Spain, color it orange. And now we're gonna take a trip across the Mediterranean, sail across the Mediterranean over to Italy, the country that looks like a boot, and color that little dot purple. This is Rome, Italy, Rome, Italy. And so I will move through them. And if you want to have a little song to go with it, CC Happy Mom has a song that goes really great with these. So the song is set to the tune of Farajaka. So you would say, London, England, Paris, France, Italy has Rome, Barcelona sits in Spain, Orléans, famous in France. And so after we sing through the song, so they've colored, they've said them, we've sang through them maybe a couple times, and then I'm going to ask them, which city is in England? Which city is in Spain? Which city is in Italy? Which cities are in France? And then I'll ask, um, what country is Rome in? What country is Barcelona in? And so I'll go through all of them where they're saying, telling me what country each city is in. And I'll ask, then I'll go through like our river. So I'll say, which city sits along the Seine River? And so they'll say Paris. And I'll say, which country I mean, which city is in the same country as the Po River? And then see if they can remember the Po River is in Italy. So we have Rome and the Po River in Italy. And I may ask, which cities sit right on the Mediterranean Sea? And so they would name Rome and Barcelona and um, so just asking them some different geological geographical questions to help them find those cities and 
you know, every week I kind of do that with them where I'm having them find something from a previous week that relates to this week, you know, just making connections with the geography. And it's teaching them to make, use references to find specific locations. So at, during review, I'll do like a geography challenge. So I have a map of just like a regular map of the world and I will tell them, you know, find something on this map that you recognize that you've learned this year on, in Europe. Look at the map of Europe and tell me something you know the name of. And so most of them will go right to the Mediterranean Sea. Some of them say Norway <laughs> or they'll say the North Sea. And so, and then after they've found those things, I'll say, okay, well, can you find, you know, European countries? And then they, they use, they're like, okay, I know the Mediterranean Sea, they're right up here, you know? And so they'll use those reference points to find and name things. So it's just a good review for them to do that. And then I take these little gold stars and I'm gonna cut little strips of five stars for each student. And then the final thing we'll do is I'll say, okay, put a gold star on in on London. And so then they'll just take their sticker and stick it on London and go through each of the cities. Um, another thing I have them do is, I forgot to mention this, I'll say, you know, after they color London blue, I'll say, put an L up at your paper. So I don't have them write out European cities. Some of them want to, but just with my age group, I don't make them do that because it's just a lot of writing for them. Um, so, and it just is very time consuming too. So I have them color it blue and then I'll say, put a blue L up at the top. And so they just write the first letter of each of these to kind of help them remember. And then they can go back through and, you know, they take this home. And so if they want to use it to review at home, they have those there too. Um, another thing you could do for um, geography is have them move from each country using a little horse figurine and just the connection I would make with the horse is saying you know the Queen of England sadly passed away recently and does anybody know what country does the Queen of England live in and I'll say England and um, you can say you know she loved horses she even came to America to watch the horse races and the Kentucky Derby and so we're gonna in, in honor of the Queen we're going to move through these European countries with our horse you could do that if you wanted to um, like make a connection to something current that's happening in the world to link to their geography location Okay, so for English, I did not like the way English went in my class last week. So I had showed, I had said I was doing motions and that was what I was planning on doing, but it just doesn't work with the song that I'm using. So the song I'm using um, goes with week four and five. So it's like, what are the nominative pronouns? Nominative pronouns, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, that's what I said. And then it repeats. And then it goes to, what are objective pronouns? Objective pronouns, me, you, him, her, it, us, you, them. And so it's fast. And with the motions, I just did not like how it went. Like it's just too hard. So when I introduced the pronouns to them, you know, we used the motions. So maybe I'll introduce it like that, but I don't think I'm going to because I think it's just too confusing for them. So what I'm going to do instead is I have an agility ladder that I'm just going to lay on the ground and then have them just move down the agility ladder until we get through like the whole thing, until we get through the whole song. And so I'll just have them take turns. And if you don't know what that is, I laid it out in my yard and had my son move through it so you could see like different ways they could jump through the agility ladder and so you could like when I had little ones what I did whenever I used an agility ladder is I would write the word on like a piece of paper and tape it on the ground or just put it between the space on the ladder but um, and then I would hold their hand and I say okay we're gonna jump when we say the word so I would do like jump on the paper that says like I you he she it you, us, you, them, you know, and they would jump every time we said the word. Um, so you can do that. 
I this year do not have the space in my room to have that set up and so I like ideally like last year what I did was I set my ladder up put all the words down on the floor and then when it came time to do class I that you know it was already ready to go and it didn't take a lot of time to set up but the space I'm in this year is just a lot tighter and so I can't, I'm not gonna have room to have it set up beforehand. So I'll just have to take them outside and let them jump in the ladder. So I won't have paper down on the ground, but I think it's superior to have it written down where they can jump because then they're seeing the words and they're jumping on them. But I'm probably just gonna let my class, we'll sing it and have them say it and then they can, if they wanna jump faster or slower, they can. <laughs> Another idea that I'm going to do, I haven't made it yet, but um, so my friend Julie showed me this. She has a piece of paper, so I've just got this like long roll of paper. And so what she did is she's written like all of the pronouns that they're going to learn. She's got them, you know, in sections on this piece of paper. And so then every week they learn a new section. So they kind of like, you know, can see them all together. And so, um, if you didn't want to do like an agility ladder or anything like that, you could write it on like a long sheet of paper and then just use like a pointer and let them point to them as they go. So, um, you know, that's just another really good option I liked. So she would have, I believe she had um, like from week two, she had the definition of a pronoun and then she had week three, pronoun order, week four, nominative pronouns, week five, objective pronouns, and then, you know, so on until, we get through um, all of the pronouns, which I believe, where do they end? I'm looking right now through here. So week 13 is the last pronoun week. So, you know, she has all of that up there um, on like one of these logs. So you need like a long sheet or you could just like tape, tape them all in a line. Um, but I think I'm gonna do that. So if I make it before I release the video, I'll show you. <laughs> For Latin, we're starting future tense. So I have, I just found this on Google, an image of a bow and I printed it out. And so I'll laminate this and put it on my board next to my Latin chart. And so I have a bow because the first one is bow and it's future tense. So we're like, we're shooting our arrow into the future. So whenever we, the only like thing I'm doing with this is, um, when we sing the Latin, I'll have everybody shoot their bow. I'll say, get your bows ready to shoot into the future, and then bow, and then they'll sing through the rest of them, and then I'm just gonna point on my chart while we sing them this week since it's brand new. And then next week we'll maybe do more fun activity with it, but um, we're just gonna chant through it, and I um, will sing you. I have a recording, and so I'll show you. Listen, I am not a singer, but you can you can sing it more beautifully to your class. <laughs> Bo bis bit bimus bitis bunt. Bo bis bit bimus bitis bunt. First conjugation, first conjugation, future tense, future tense. For math, I have made this chart. Um, I made this last year and I just got this picture of the Avengers from one of my boys coloring book and I, so I colored it in and I glued it on black poster board and then I had these little die cuts from the Dollar Tree and I just kind of glued them around there. I'll give you a good picture of it. And so, what I did was I made these superhero moves that can go with it. So we'll chant them and I'll have them go through their superhero moves. So I've just got them on little note cards and I'll read them to you while Max does the moves for you so you can see those. <laughs>
for the tens, this is another just like, I don't know, I just bought this pack of poster boards and one of them was an arrow, one of them was like a bubble and so anyway, there was a balloon, so I wrote the tens on the balloon and I just tied a little piece of um, curling ribbon to the end so it looked like a balloon. So for this one, the ten song has like a shake, it's a chant and it has shakes. So I'll just give everybody a shaker and we'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, or whatever the beat is, I think it's like that. And then um, I'll do the circle thing. So I've got this laminated and so I'll circle a couple of different numbers and when we get to that number, they'll jump. So it would be like 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, you know, and then when they get to a number that's circled, they'll jump. And so I'll have them do shakers while we do that, just to have something to go along with the music. And that's math. For history, we have the Hundred Years' War. So I will pull out card, uh, timeline card 82, which tells us all about the Hundred Years' War and the Black Death. And it has a nice picture of Joan of Arc on the front in her armor. And I also printed out some pages from Story of the World Activity Book, Volume 2. And so the ones that go along with this is there's a picture of the plague doctor, which is nice and creepy. And then it has the cycle of the plague, which shows rats, rat infested with bacteria, flea bites rat and gets bacteria. Then the flea's digestive system fills with bacteria. Flea bites human, humans become sick and die. So that kind of explains the plague cycle there. And then it also has a plague mask template. So they're very creepy. You could have your kids color and cut those out while they listen to the song. Um, or they have Joan of Arc paper dolls. So you could, uh, you know, if you, if you buy the story of the world activity book you know you could print these out and let your students color them cut them out or take them home so my plan is to color these myself and then just have a, her on my board and show show it to them and the same thing with the plague doctor i'm just going to show them the picture of the plague doctor and we'll talk about like why do you think he looked like that you know why did he have his whole face covered, even his eyeballs? So we'll talk about the, the plague. And let's see. Okay, so for motions, um, I'm gonna start with during the Hundred Years War, which we've used this sign before. During the Hundred Years War, Joan of Arc and King Charles VII led the French, so an ASL F is like this, so you just kind of flick it out to the side, the French to defeat the English. And so this is the sign that we use in timeline for England. So the English, very proper, at the siege of or Orléans, so big O and then in the middle. And then in the late 1340s, Fleas on rats carried the plague, which killed one in three. So you've got your creepy fleas on rats climbing up, killing one in three Europeans. So we will sing and do motions, and I'll show them these visuals that go along with it. And I am going to just link a video for you to watch. It explains the Hundred Years' War very well it explains actually like from William the Conqueror or not William the Conqueror I'm sorry Richard the Lionhearted and how we talked about his mom Eleanor of Aquitaine it really like explains why did we mention her and why it matters in the hundred years war like how those those things are connected so I'll just link that video because it is a lot to explain and they are gonna explain it way better than I ever could so I'll have that below for you to watch if, you, if you're interested in explaining and making those connections um, for your students or just for yourself. I find it really fascinating, so I hope you enjoy it too. For science, we have nature cycles. So um, 
that there's a science card, science card seven goes along with this and it explains each of the cycles really well in the back. It's just like really helpful for me to read these so that I know what I'm talking about before I get into front of the class. But um, I'm also gonna give them a coloring sheet for this one. This is an Etsy purchase um, of Cycle 2 material and it has um, really great like coloring pages that go with each of the history sentences. It has a little page where they review a timeline, they write their objective pronouns, Latin, geography. I mean, it has all their memory work right here and then it always has like a great coloring page for science. So I'm gonna use this science coloring sheet this week because it really is a good visual explanation of each of these cycles. So even if we don't get to it in class, I'm just gonna send it home with them so they can color it. Um, but, I, I am gonna let them spend some time coloring it. We'll have time for it. But, okay, so first we have the water cycle. And so this picture just does a really good job of, ex of showing you like the rain and then it runs off the plants into the water and then condensation. And so you can talk about the water cycle. And then for carbon and oxygen cycle, it shows the um, cow that releases carbon dioxide when it breathes out and the tree takes in carbon dioxide and releases oxygen that goes back in, that the cow can breathe back in. And then the nitrogen cycle is the cycle that I do not re ever, ever remember learning about in my entire life. But it is the cycle that describes, the, the nitrogen cycle describes the passing of the element nitrogen between the atmosphere, biosphere, and geosphere. And so it shows that happening in this picture. So at least I will color one and show it to them and I will ha give them some time to color it while we say them. I have a little song that's to the tune of Sesame Street and so we'll sing it while they color and, and then it's a detailed picture so I'll send it home with them to finish coloring because I, I don't think they'll, they won't have time to do it in class. But um, I will play the little recording of my Sesame Street song. I really am not a singer. I don't think I'm a singer, but I just wanted to give you my song that I'm using for it. What are some cycles in nature? Water cycle, carbon and oxygen cycle, nitrogen cycle. These are some cycles of nature. Okay, for our timeline motions, I always have a ASL alphabet chart that I can reference because sometimes I forget what each letter is and in my notes I always just write like ASLJ or ASLT and sometimes I forget what they are. So I have a little printed alphabet chart that I keep in my school bag in case I forget. So we're going to start with Judah Falls to Babylon and same sign we used for Babylon before and then temple destroyed so we do like a rock and so the idea behind this is that the church was founded upon a rock the rock and so then you do a t and just place it on the rock so temple destroyed it's like you have a piece of paper and you're crumpling it up and you're throwing it away it's destroyed judah falls to babylon temple destroyed and then babylon falls to persia this is an aslp then Jews return and rebuild the temple. So it's different from our sign, like feudalism is like this. So the way this is different, it's one on top of the other. It's like bricks being laid on top of the other. So Jews return and rebuild the temple. And then you're just gonna do your sign again for temple. Jews return and rebuild the temple. Roman Republic, these are supposed to be ours, but my fingers are so short, I have a hard time getting them twisted. So. Roman Republic for Golden Age of Greece we're signing gold so touch your ear like you have gold in your ear and then yellow like the Y so Golden Age of Greece and Peloponnesian Wars so these wars were fought in Greece and you can show them the timeline card has this man in his armor so we're gonna do a G and then you just kind of trace down your nose like the nose shield on their helmets so Peloponnesian Wars 
and then Persia, so do your P again, P, uh, falls to Alexander the Great. And then that's it for timeline. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this is helpful. Like the whole point of me making these videos is because I have been helped by so many other teachers throughout the years that have helped me figure out what I'm doing. And so I just, and have pulled my resources together and I'm just telling you what I like to do and how I do it so that you can take or leave what you like. It, but the whole point is just to be helpful to other teachers and tutors and homeschooling moms. So if I have not explained something clearly, please feel free to ask me a question. You know, it's like, I'm happy. I wanna know if I haven't explained something clearly or if I've got something wrong, like last week, I <laughs> said something wrong in geography about like the mouth of the river and versus the source. And so I corrected myself in the comments. Um, so just be sure to like check the comments if you're like, oh, that didn't sound right. Maybe I, maybe I caught it and I corrected it in the comments or I didn't catch it. I want to know if I'm wrong because I don't want to be putting <laughs> wrong information out there so just feel free to comment whatever and um i want to make it helpful and good for you that's the whole point so thank you see you next week